Hey there, welcome back to Agrarian Skies 2. This is the episode 63. How are you doing? I hope your day's going well. So, um, what's going to happen here today is we're going to do something just a little different. Today we're going to have a sing-along. No, we're not going to have a sing-along. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm basically doing my introduction here, saying hello, and showing you that I have this arcane assembler this was my first high instability craft and i am going to break away right now for a moment and because when i did it i actually recorded myself doing it i was in the middle of doing several things so i wasn't actually doing an episode at the time but it was a high instability uh combine so I figured I might as well record it for posterity and make sure that if anything went absolutely fugly, I would um, have it on tape to show it to you after the fact. And you see that I have it. That is a spoiler. It I didn't die. The game didn't crash. I didn't melt my computer. And so I'm going to cut away right now. I'm going to load that up and we shall see how it went. Be right back. Okay, here we go. This is a high instability. I'm glad I was given a free uh, uh, Thaumium Scepter because that's what this is for. And here we go. This is, again, high instability. Whoop. <laughs> let's hit the right thing. Boonk. And let's see how it goes. High instability. I doubled up on all the gems. I only had the one scepter, so if that gets zapped, then I'm kind of hosed. But uh, high instability, and it is still rock solid. Not a beep, not a whir, not a scratch. Loving it! But it's going to take a long time for it to pull in all that essence. This is far from over. working. This is working. I'm working on my uh, one of my quests right here. Uh, and let's see how we doing. Ten, count it down. Yeah, even for a, uh, a high instability Whoops, did I hear a zap? I heard a zap. I think I heard a zap. Oh, there goes the scepter. Bye, scepter. I liked you. I didn't want to see you go. I liked having two of you. And we should be just about done. Should just be fire. Ignis left. Fire. That's it. Yep. There it is. Yeah. And, yep, nothing got zapped. All good. All good in the hood. Yes. So, that is, whoops, Arcane Assembler. No, I've got that. It's in my <laughs> inventory. What do you mean I don't have it? Arcane Assembler. I have it. What do you mean? Let's uh, drop it on the ground. Pick it up again. Oh, I should probably scan it. That would be cool. Give me all the stuff. Yeah. All right. Now what does it say? Nope. <laughs> it's because the hopper grabbed it. Okay. What's up with that? Okay. Okay. This is this is just not right. I have it. It's there. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll use the uh, I'll use the uh, OP uh, quest book and solve it that way. Anyhow, that this is my flashback <laughs> back to regularly scheduled programming. Okay, that was interesting, huh? <laughs> All right. So that being said, I had done quite a bit of stuff in questing and oh, whoops that's not my quest book this is my quest book there we go and uh many things that i did are just little 
little piddly things that I just was able to bang out and get done. And so I am going through and cleaning up uh, another four here. And let's see what I can do about that. Um, I'm actually going to be making my deep dark portal today. I collected the materials for that. And Sky Farm? Yeah, nope. Nuts, not one. Storage Wars? Power Grid. There we go. What's in Power Grid? I completed the multiplying power, which means that I made my QED and I put it right there. And that's what it is. That's what it does. And I took some Eulorium uh, ore that I had received and threw it in here with some coal. That gives me three bars per, so I went ahead and did that. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? Actually, I'm going to finish turning in my quests first because otherwise I'm gonna get distracted and forget to do that. Oh, of course, I killed more zombies. Every time I go by over there, if I'm not recording, I stop and take pot shots with my crossbow. For me, it's just fun. And uh, let's see, for the hoarding, Applied Engineering, oh, Essentia Storage, and Arcane Crafting. Well, Arcane Crafting was completing the Arcane Assembler, which I did. And, ooh, I got another storage cell. Claim that reward. Oh, poo, it won't let me. I'm already full up, so let's go over here. And unload some of this junk. You are junk. You are junk. You are junk. Uh, yeah, you are junk. And I saved the peckheads. <laughs> you are junk. And that needs to go in a different location. I really don't want to throw my agricarnation into the AE system. I will not look for it there. So we come over here again. And let's see what else am I getting rid of. Uh, the rancher. Get rid of the breeder. Get rid of the bone meal. All of that is just going to poof. <laughs> because I got a barrel of it over here with a void on it and it's a priority so eh. oh well uh let's see i'll get rid of that for now and tell me i'm gonna keep that i got a potions generator which i will never use get rid of the spider eyes and oh yeah arcane abacus now remember i did that combination on a high instability I made the Arcane Abacus just a few minutes before I started recording, and this is how it works. First of all, you make it um, Arcane Abacus. Let's look it up in here. The Arcane Abacus was pointed out to me by one of my wonderful viewers, which I don't have the name in front of me. Please forgive me. And um, pointed out that it's right here in the middle of Witching Gadgets. I found it. I bought it. I did it. And yay! And it's real easy to use. Um, you just basically click on it and it tells you what do you got going on. Well, I had a 13 in or 13 stability booster when I ran this, and there were two items, three items that were not matched. So I had unmatched crystals here that I then added over there. So that helped it. And then I also added three more here and three more over here, which gave me a total stability factor of 14. So I have a feeling at this point, considering high instability is a rating of about 12, I should be good for all high instability crafts and our infusions from this point on, unless I have something that is very specifically a um, an imbalanced or uh, or just a really funky one, or I just have really really bad luck. So that's what that is and how that works. Let's get rid of that. And since I went ahead and did the arcane assembler, I said to myself, "Self, quit talking to yourself like that." And I kind of looked at myself weird and went, okay. <laughs> um, remember how I did a subnet for all of my cool stuff? Well, today, while I was working at my real job, I remembered, wait a minute, there is an Essentia storage bus. Why can't you do a subnet with that? And I did. 
and it worked. So I am happy. This went from being a six to a five. Um, and then I took something else and turned it into a four um, by cleaning this up and everything is now sitting on that subnet, that subnet, and then there is what else up there? I don't remember. Oh, I got the chest here. So I now have a four channel network here. And right here, I figured since I'm already making the arcane assembler, I might as well actually get off my lazy ass and make my molecular assembler and set it up with the ME interfaces. Okay, so that's what I did. I didn't do it on camera. There's so many good tutorials for how this is done that uh, all I'm going to do is, is brush on to the highlights of it. The, arcane, the, the molecular assembler is what does your crafting in the game. Actually, it's kind of like a crafting table. It does absolutely nothing on its own. The interfaces are what hold the patterns. Patterns I'll get into in a moment. And, whoops, they've got to all be sitting on the bottom one, I'll bet, because I've got a couple patterns. Or I was looking at the wrong thing, and I probably went right by them. There they are. So, of course, one of the first things I make was <laughs> the pick <laughs> and my world interaction upgrade and the redstone block and my uh, speed upgrades so that I could have this thing running at, at maximum uh, throughput here. And this is actually generating red uh, cobblestone faster than I can pump it back out into here. So I may just go ahead and uh, run a pipe into there and speed that process up just a little bit. Um, I'm distracting myself. And we go back to this. I am Generally, the first thing you make as a pattern <laughs> in any auto crafting situation is the ability to make more patterns. And since the one thing I was running out of was quartz glass, it was a natural progression through there. Now, this will do nothing by itself. You can open it just like a normal crafting table. You can put items in there. Uh, if you have a pattern to show it, you can put that stuff in there, show what the item is, then take the pattern out. Um, but it will not craft on its own. So what you need to do is you have to create a crafting CPU. Now the crafting CPU is the only required uh, item for auto crafting. So what you need is a crafting CPU. Uh, crafting CPU looks something just like that one right there, crafting unit. And you make that and that will do absolutely nothing by itself. You have to turn it into um, a crafting, you have to turn it into a crafting storage by adding in the same memory plugs that you would use to make a storage unit. I went straight to a 4K myself, which is why that one downstairs is yellow, which gives it a certain volume of bytes that it will store while it is manufacturing things. Um, now, I have my pattern terminal right here, which is where I created the patterns for what I was working on. Let's see, I don't can't think of anything right off the top but let's go ahead and let's go with um, planks okay so planks right here oak planks that's what it is you put the oak in you get the four planks this system doesn't know how to make them automatically so you take and you know if I didn't have that there let's go ahead and just get wood you can pull the materials out of your inventory as well um, for example, if I had that right there, I could just drop it right in there. Do your, your oak wood planks once it's correct. Now, in some cases, if you pick a recipe over here and it uses um, an ore dictionary material, it may have like five different types of wood planks or five different types of sticks or five different types of fence post or whatever because they're or dictionary in here, this will only look for and, and do exact matches. So you generally want to 
grab whatever it is that is most common for you and throw that in there as a requirement. So now once you've got your blank patterns in place, you hit that and you now have a encoded pattern, which when you hit sh left shift, it will show you what your patterns are. So I've done that in the pattern provider. Now up here is my interface terminal. This gives me the ability to just drag and drop. You can't shift click into the, uh, into the interface terminal. Now, the interfaces that I showed you before, the four of them that were attached to that molecular assembler, you can take them to a, an anvil and name them. And the way you configure, again, a lot of this stuff is covered on many fantastic tutorials, so don't hesitate to look them up. They're very easy to find. When you are running, like I am, four different sets of crafting into a singular uh, molecular assembler, you will run into some slowdowns. Now, if you use the full-size uh, interface block, the one that has six interfaces, and for say you have one pipe going into your interface block and then you have four molecular assemblers around the outside that particular set of nine recipes would be able to work on four chambers at once so you'd actually get a lot more of production done very quickly right now i'm kind of limiting myself to a kind of a slow throughput by only having everything going through the one uh, that is one thing to consider when you're setting these things up. Uh, let's see, I also probably, since I just put this on, bonk, uh, I probably have some things that I've put in place. I know I scanned some of it, but not everything. I put the, put that in most recently, I think. And so we get a little bit of the auto scanning going on. Um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, you know what I might not have scanned? I might not have scanned. No, nope, it's going to treat that as all part of the same thing. Um, I, as you also may or may not have noticed, I moved my enchantment setup when I started setting up all of this before. It just never occurred to me to say anything about it before now. And this is cranking along pretty well. I can take this out and bring it over here. Whoop. Come here, you. Get me out of there. Hello. All right. Recently, my flight mechanic and my space bar just doesn't seem to be real happy with me. Okay, so now I can take this and drop it in there and everything, all of those crystallized essences just got dropped straight into <laughs> that drive. And I don't know, that is orange now telling me that I'm wondering if other crap went in there that wasn't supposed to go in there or if that's reacting to the fact that it's a locked number of devices. I think that is what it is. So now I'm going to take that out because I know that all the majority of the crystals that I wanted are in it so now i'm going to come over here and i'm going to look for crystallized c r y s there we go so i do have something that wasn't on there before modus so i'm going to grab the modus i'm going to come over here to my workbench put the drive in and then i'm going to add modus to it then i can take this out now if I had, and this is something that I saw in the in one of the videos that I was uh, working with, there is the, the ability to treat your subnets just like a, uh, treat the drives on your subnet just like I was treating the uh, patterns on my molecular assembler. You have the ability to go in and uh, directly reach them through a terminal setting by putting a series of storage buses on the back of these and have that be a closed network to a um, to your drive system. And I didn't do that, but it gives you the ability to. 
mostly because this is this is not a a, a a let's play let's play this is not just me loading up minecraft and 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 you know uh, a mod pack like the direwolf 20 set or one of the other ones infinity or some of the other ftb you know open play worlds this is actually intended as a set of goals etc and i've never claimed that here i go rattling on and on again um, pick one. Do I want the Essentia storage or do I want the reward bag? Wow. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am so soured <laughs> by the fail rewards that I've been getting. Oh, uh, let's see what else have I got here. Have I got any other bags? Yeah, let's go open those. They're giving me about the same amount of value. Um, let's see. So I've got... I've already got another 4K, so that's fine. Let's just go with let's go with the amusement value. Boom. All right. Let's uh, uh, in furnace. Oh, is that so? All right. So um, I just got a grader. I got two graders. So let's let's try and be positive this time. They won't be fail bags. They'll be something that is actually nice or decent or that I can show mommy because she'll be so proud of me. You never know. Um, that's empty. Where did, oh, that doesn't go in here. That's why. That goes over here. Don't put that in there unless you mean it. <laughs> remember, uh, this one is actually still set. Even though I moved it, I remembered and reset it. Actually, I think it remembered for me that this is a higher priority. I want the six primal S aspects to be on their own drive and not on any of these. Now I can take this one step further and I can put some, I'm gonna make another subnet from here. So I'll, I'll show how that works, but I'm gonna make another subnet from here that has six jars of um, Essentia, uh, the, 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 the six primal aspects, and they will be void jars. So once these drives fill up with those primal aspects, it will then go 64 over into the jar and be done. So I won't have to worry about overflowing or having too much, uh, too much clogging my system. And let's go ahead and, whoops, hit B, eat some brains. Ooh. I got one Ignis. <laughs> All right, so here we go with the with the reward bags. Let's see if we can get non-fail stuff. Have a positive attitude. We're gonna get something good, and here we go. Fireproof ebony, ebony wood, silver wood log. Now that would have been, that's that okay. That's not a fail. I'll I'll I'll, I'll agree. That's not a fail. Now. <laughs> Um, I've heard it called the turd suit <laughs> and you know what? It kind of looks like it. So <laughs> that's not a fail reward. That is a really good reward for someone. If that's their first peg, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. I missed out on an energy cell for that. Yeah, pretty much. So, this is the culinary generator that I did, and I'm going to dump that in here, and yeah, I will be putting the Arcane Assembler in and setting it up, but right now, what I'm going to do, I don't know, this is me going into an entirely new experience. I have never been to the Deep Dark, so... That being said, um, this requires, let me open up the Deep Dark Portal. Portal to the Deep Dark is a quintuple compressed cobblestone, four quadruples, and four unstable ingots. Now, as you already know, I can already make the unstable ingots by basically making the semi-stable nuggets with a, what some of the diamonds that I have. And I have done so, and I made a whole bunch of them. And there we go, just like that. I have now made a portal to the deep dark, which I have never been. 
I don't know what to expect, and I will be going in there kind of blindly. I believe that my wings will still work. I'm expecting they will still work. I'm hoping that my sigil of the uh, blood lamp will still work. I never know what to expect. Poof. And so I know that uh, from watching uh, Direwolf and some of the others that darkness is bad there. And I have the ability with this and a rough, let's see, if I were to pull up my blood network, which is kind of draining a little bit right now because it's not doing anything. Uh, you know what? It's not in there. That is not what I want. Where is my divination sigil? It's probably in here. And there we go. Divination sigil says I have a uh, 9 million LP. Let's see. The blood lamp uses up two, I think. Let's see. What was it? Um, nope. It used 40. Uh, no, it used even more than that. Or is it running and, and not? Eh, let's see. Yeah, it's running on other things too right now, and I don't know what it's running. Probably my armor. So that doesn't matter. But um, I think I got a few uses of the blood lamp <laughs> while I'm in there. So uh, let's see. I will. Let's see. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I don't know that it really matters where I put it, to be honest. But anyhow, I'll think about that because I'll want to set something up and have it kind of mean something. And let's get rid of the ebony wood, which will not burn. Let's get rid of the ME interfaces. And I made an extra Essentia storage bus when I started today, which is why I one of the things I was working on. And let's see, I think everything else is going on. Now, the thing about the deep dark is I thought that the main reason for going to the deep dark was to get resources. The only resource that I am even remotely thinking I'm going to need is uh, Eulorium. But I also realized, actually, I'm just going to fly up there for this one. Um... I realized when I was talking before, when I was saying that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to run out of Eulorium. I'm going to run, you know, somebody give me some ideas on, on how to get more Eulorium because I'm going to need it. Well, the reality is I've gone through two of the resonant cells. That is 100 million energy and still had this full and charged another one, and I've only received one, or is it two now, one ingot of cyanite, which means that all of the fuel I've put in, almost none of it's been used. <laughs> so I'm not hurting. I just realized I am not hurting for energy now because I did all of that without it even being, you know, full. So uh, I am not as concerned about my Yellowite as I was recently. So that's kind of a good thing. And let's see, what else? Um, big tree. I love the big tree. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I'm trying to scan it while I'm running. <laughs> That's funny. That was fun. Okay, then. So, what else do I want to show you or talk about? I, today was kind of a, uh, a hit and miss, just showing you through. Oh, that, I haven't looked at the nodes recently. Let's take a quick look at them. I still haven't seen these move around. 
But wow, look at it go. 67, 60, 17, 32, 33, 23. This is working out perfectly. When everything gets above 65 is when I'm going to convert it and probably pipe all of that straight into my AE network because <laughs> that just looks like a cool mechanic. And then I'll put another one over here just to see how big I can grow one. <laughs> one of the strange things I like to do. And yes, I had my, uh, my mob farm running again because I wanted to get more... Uh, more essences ethereal essences and um yeah beans i'm getting mostly the same thing over and over again and for some reasons some reason the beans are not actually getting oh that's why they're and coming down here because that's full i may not even be able to eh, i can put them in there just comes a point when it stops trying to accept them and yeah so that's what's going on there. And then I keep throwing more stuff into here. Let's see how that is. Oh, you know what? Do I still... Oh, I put the drive back in, didn't I? Did I put the drive back in over here? Yeah, I did. Okay. And did it load up again? Yeah, good. Everything's working like it should. Happy, happy, happy. And Quark Electron Director. Turn around, come back, look, and it's the same thing. Boop. Hold still. Gotcha. Now what is it? Quail eating ducks. <laughs> Alrighty then. So I think that pretty much wraps up this semi-interesting episode. Mostly I just wanted to share some of the stuff that I have done off camera. I've been kind of forced to scramble around a little left, right, and sideways to, to get a few things done. And uh, I didn't really feel like I had the opportunity to do a full focused episode, um, which is why, you know, I got a lot of little things done periodically over a period of time. And I did solve the Essentia uh, subnet issue so that was a pretty big thing for me and I got this going so that was that was cool for me and uh, I'm sure that it will be more and more interesting eventually and let's see like I said what is going to be my next thing I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run into the deep dark and wet myself and run back out screaming like a little girl um, I'm not a person who likes to take risks <laughs> <laughs> even in games <laughs> except when i'm gonna grow a tree and it decides to throw me into the void i survived that i can survive the deep dark i think <laughs> so uh, that being said thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed yourself i hope uh you're having a fantastic day have a good one talk to you later